Hey guys, Big Ridge here in Ohio Fish Rescue. Just wanted to give you a little update today of things that people have asked on the internet. So we're going to touch on all them subjects. Stick with us and we'll answer a lot of different things. Are you done yet? <laughs> okay, we're here, and people were asking about our creature from the Black Lagoon. What happened to him? Well, he is right here. He is still here. We've got him on that floating piece, and we've got a little rock to hold him on there. He stays right there now. Looks like he's crawling out of the place, and he is awesome. That came from our buddy Jim Sheasley. He is just amazing. We love him. He is awesome. Then everyone else is asking, how's Brutus and Bruiser getting along? Well, they're still getting along good. Here is Brutus right here. There's Bruiser and there's Brutus. He's six foot, he's four foot. And they are getting along great. You see no new nipped fins, no nothing. They are doing awesome together. They are getting along. They are doing great. And Bruiser's, you know, he's, he's eating again. Everything is great. I mean, it's honky-dory. So we're doing good there. Now, so I hope that answers that question. And let me go out back here to show you. Uh, people were asking about the koi and the uh, uh, paddlefish. Well, the problem is the paddlefish, they only eat at night. So we haven't got that on video yet. Because every time at night, it's easy to go out there at night. But the problem is catching it right before night, what do you call that, dusk, where the camera can still pick up and the fish are out. We keep forgetting to catch it then, so we can feed them at night every night, no problem. But to catch it right at dusk, I'm, I'm still working on that. We've made a few videos that were too dark so far, so we're trying. We're, we're going to work on that for you. But let's go on out there, and I'll uh, show you how clear the back pond has gotten. And you see this is all cleared out for the new 1,000-gallon. Right here. Here we go. Okay. Now, this back pond... Um, I don't know if it's the, the the water lettuce or whatever, but I can see the bottoms all the way around the edge. I can see the bottom. And it was actually clear yesterday, but it rained last night. So it's back a little bit dirty again. I don't see the bottom as good. But when I throw food out here, you can definitely see the uh, paddlefish on the bottom swimming around. And there's still seven of them. We haven't lost one. So let me get some food. Okay, I am back and I do have food now. Are you guys ready for this? I don't know if you can see this before I feed you. Look at all these tramped down plants. This is where the deer are coming in and trampling all this down. So we may have to put a fence up right there on the side and a fence right here connecting the corner all the way around the side over there to keep the deer out of here because if they poke their hooves through the liner, we've got problems. You know, it's not so much the plants I'm worried about. It's the liner we're worried about when all these deer come up through here. And they're actually sitting in here crushing all these plants. But anyways, let's get back to the feeding. Here we go. Now you can watch. I'll zoom in on them for you. Oh, goodness. Look at them go. Man, so colorful. So pretty. The babies are growing out. That's just a beautiful sight. I love seeing that. So many different, bright, vibrant, I mean, vibrant colors. Oh. <laughs> they act like hungry, hungry little hippos. They get fed like three, four times a day. There's something else. Now you can see over here in this corner, see how you can see this hose going in? There's the first ledge right there. You can see that. And then it drops off another, uh, I don't know, 36 inches. And you can see that hose going down, and it disappears right there. That's right there is the bottom. So when this pond is calm, like right now they're all feeding, so you see all the splashing and waving on top. When it's calm, you can see all the, the paddlefish on the bottom just swimming around. They don't stop swimming ever. When they're At nighttime, they come up and eat, but at daytime, they stay swimming. They never stop moving. So, they're like in auto mode in the daytime, though, where they're like sleeping, and they just cruise the bottom. 
So, but we there there's seven of them big ones out there, and they're like you know 30 inches long, and there's one that's about I'd say 18 to 20 inches is our smallest one, but they're still doing great out there. They they eat and they're doing good and they're going to live through the winter. For all the questions about the winter time, yes, the paddlefish will stay in the pond. So do the koi. Um, they lived last winter. They're going to live again this winter. Don't worry about it. What it is is, on, uh, for your pond to make it through winter, you either have to have, you know, air coming up from the bottom and then you know hitting the top. And the reason for that is it brings up the warmer water from the bottom to the top and it leaves a hole that never freezes. Well, that's so the gases can explode, or can explode, can escape. Um, otherwise, the gases will build up and you'll poison all your fish and they will die if your whole top covers over. We have the aeration, that's one way. Two, you can throw a floating heater out there, that's a second way. A third way is leave your waterfall running and then it runs this way and then over into the overflow. So around that overflow is always non-frozen and around this waterfall is always non-frozen plus we have the air so um they stay in there no problem the the water don't freeze all the way through that's five foot deep there in the very middle so the temperature is probably about 50 55 somewhere around there 50 degrees something 48 at the worst but it don't freeze so they stay dormant down at the bottom in the winter time and uh you know Come summertime, oh, here's a, here's a little trick for everybody. When your water temperature becomes 50 degrees, stop feeding your koi. Some people stop at 55. You can stop there too. Um, when it reaches 55 degrees, stop feeding your koi. The reason being is their metabolism slows down so much and they have a belly full of food and that food stays in their belly, don't get processed, and it rots. And it rots from the inside out, and your fish get sick and die over the winter. Um, a belly full of rotten food. So we don't want that. So at 55, some people do 50. Stop feeding your fish, and then when the water gets above 50 and comes springtime, you can start feeding them again. Slowly at first, once a day. When it gets up to 60, start feeding you know three times a day. When it gets to 70 degrees, go ahead and feed them five times a day if you're power feeding them and you want them to grow thick and fat. Um, ours aren't really super thick. I do three to five times a day in the summertime. I mean, they're definitely healthy and big. They're just not chunky. <laughs> but they are definitely healthy. So, that's the, that's the update on the pond. And uh, let me see anything else over here. Uh, we bought some contractor bags for the chairs because they're all new cushions that uh, Bridget bought for us, so we don't want to ruin them. We bought contractor bags. We're going to put over the chairs and then put under the, the legs all winter long, so nothing will ruin them. We'll bring the hammock in for winter, and uh, we still haven't burnt the, the, the wood pile we built up from uh, all them trees back there that we cleared out, so that's going to be coming up soon. We're going to have a big bonfire night. Um, let me see what else. Uh, everything else is done good back here. Oh, now that the Dwight Howard tank facades are gone, we're no longer using this for storage behind it. Now the storage has to be in front of it. But when you walk out of this door, it is so much more room out here. This used to come out to the Dwight Howard storage, you know, the facades out to about here. And then everything was stuffed behind it. Now it's kind of stuffed up against the wall. So we've got our eating area, our cooking area, and then we have the living room area. So it's opening up and getting better. This is our living room area. And uh, this is going to be the stairs going down. So that'll be good. But we've got plenty of walkway here. What I want to make here is a buffet table. Something that will fold up to the wall and then fold down. And we can have that for a full buffet all the way across here. Now these um, cornhole boards along with everything over here. You got all kinds of games. There's football, there's horseshoes and the horseshoe things. You got these rings for hula hooping and you got these things for a game. Uh, these for games, all kinds of stuff here. This has all got to be put up somewhere. We had to move that from inside. So we've got more tiki decorations to put up. This whole bag full of tiki decorations, this bag, you know, these signs, this bird, all this stuff's got to go get put up. That's why it's on the table in our way. So we have to get done. 
for decorations here. Now, you know, I still got to take this fencing and cover each corner like this, but I want to put styrofoam up first. So each corner is covered with styrofoam uh, and, and then the tiki fence. And that'll help match this in for the tiki luau look here. And then when we spray foam all this, we can just cover this. But first I got to get the electrical wiring done. What we want is three ceiling fans across here. Uh, anyways, they're ceiling fans with like uh, uh, leaves. So there's five leaves that go around with a light in the center. And there's three of them over here. So we got to wire them in first before we spray foam. And then I want to plug on that corner and this corner that is worked by a switch down here. So that way these rope lights that go all the way around, I can turn on and off from the switch and be able to plug them in up there without running extension cords up the wall and all that kind of stuff. So there's two things we need up in the ceiling before we, uh, you know, spray foam. And then I'm going to need under the deck a four gang plug over there under the deck on its own breaker a four gang plug over here uh four gang i mean four plugs two gfcis or whatever so that i can plug on their own breaker so i can plug in pumps for the pond here because we have pumps that we haven't plugged in yet because we're running too much electricity off of these 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 plugs here are all ran off of the same breakers them tanks are on so if i plug in the extra pump and i don't know if you guys remember there's four jets coming out the wall right there running off of one pump coming from that overflow. That hasn't been plugged in yet because as soon as we plug it in over here to that wall, it, it breaks that tripper or trips that breaker. And then we plug it in over here, it trips this breaker. So we need our own special uh, sub panel ran out here and then one four plug over here, one four plug over here and both on their own breakers. Then for this, this heater or this whole cooking system, there's a pizza maker. There's a, a microwave oven. You got a hot dog cooker and a bun warmer. We're going to need two plugs there and two plugs here. And then I would say this have a four plug over here and this have a four plug, but each one on their own breaker. So these can be separately. We have a refrigerator here. We have other electric warmer plates and stuff like that. Oh, we have the nachos machines. They got to be plugged in. And then we have, uh, you know, the, the nacho warmers. And there's a bunch of stuff that needs to be plugged in on their own breakers over here. So I'm figuring a, a panel right here on the wall, a sub panel, and then every breaker there, ran from the front of the house from the 200 amp service. So we got to get that done before winter, before we can spray foam this. And that's our plans for this back deck. We haven't even gotten up to the point where we've enclosed it. I figured this winter, we'll go ahead and put the plastic up again outside here so that that way this exhaust fan is running exhausting all the moisture out of the fish room when it gets up to 50 percent humidity that exhaust fan kicks on and it constantly sucks through the fish room so that is blowing out the warm air in there into here so in the middle of winter when it's 20 degrees out there this can be about 55 60 out here and be comfortable and all the air comes in here and then goes down between all these lines on the wood so uh, that's what we're going to do this winter Come summertime, if we enclose this in with sliding glass doors all the way around, uh, then we're going to have to have vents somewhere in the floor, in the, you know, uh, whatever. We're going to have to have vents for the air to escape because we're pumping air back here from that. So that's the update on the back deck. Let's go on back in and head into the fish room. Oh, here's a problem. See these pipes? You've seen them in warehouses before. They're like metal things that go up and then like ramps that go over. I would like to find these. I don't know what they're called. I've tried looking them up, but I need it like five foot wide because this is only three foot. So another foot this way and another foot that way. Then people can walk over this without kicking, tripping, or crushing these pipes. So we need to find that. If anybody's got an idea on that, we need to get the thumbtacks and put this wood back up for this tank. Because that's, that's getting to be an eyesore. We've got a little bit more stuff to put away here. We cleaned off that couch and then this couch. And then we put more stuff on it trying to clear off this. Um, the RO unit for my salt water. I got to finish putting that together. And then, you know, the mermaid outfits we got to put up. I've got plants I got to put away. Them are all weighted plants I've kept. And this is all a bunch of junk that we need to get out of here. And this is just a lighting transformer I can put in the back with the lighting. So we're good to go there. Now, 
This here is all salt for the salt water tank, which I'm going to start on next because everyone's talking about the salt water tank. This is all rocks for the salt water tank, all my uh, meters for the salt water tank, and some other stuff here. So all this here goes with the salt water tank that we have to put away. So now, here is the big reason, people. See this? This is a 265 gallon tank, right? Now, if you see this uh, pool, let me zoom in here. All the way around it, this cement is touching the edge, right? If you come over here, ever since I moved in here, this has been here. This is a like a two inch drop down right here. There is a, a drop right across here. We put a blanket over it so people don't trip and stuff. Not a blanket, but a little rug. But if you look on this edge, see how it's dropped down two inches? The same amount as that drop down in the rug right there. Let me see if I can stand on it and show you. Okay. It does drop down right there. So, and we see this up there, it's level again, back level with it. But down here, it's dropped down. So this tells me that this cement has dropped down. Let me zoom out a little bit. This cement has dropped down. Now, we need to get underneath of it and prop this up, jack it back up, and then prop it up. If we just go ahead and put, let me see, 200, 260 gallons of water uh, times nine, we're talking about 2,400 pounds, somewhere around there. I'm just guesstimating, I didn't do the math. On top of here, I'm thinking this will go ahead and break through. So we are reluctant to put water in this because I've got the whole underside done, we're ready to go. I'm ready to set this up, but Josh brought up that good point with this here being structurally secure, you know, it's held the weight of all these other tanks around, but I don't want to try it with this cement already pushed down. So until we can find a way to get under here, jack this up, prop this up and put some posts under there, I don't want to fill this here. I would love to keep this right here. That's great. This ain't going to be here. This is going to go into there because when you walk in here, if you notice, let me show you. This is the walkway in. Now, if that tank wasn't there, you'd have a nice walkway in. Right now, we have to turn and go this little itty bitty walkway through here because of the Dwight Howard tank being here. So we need to eliminate this, but this can stay because this is staying on the wall. Now you see, we've collected more cholo wood and we, you know, all these rocks are coming out of here. This is gonna be for the, the shrimp, which we have already here. We have a bunch of blue shrimp here. So we're just waiting on the salt water to go to here. Now Josh is like, we're gonna eliminate the salt water out of here, and he scared a bunch of you guys. Don't worry about that. Trust me, i have done too much work to this, made it look too pretty, and put too much time into it to not do it. We are going to. But I've been fighting Josh. I wanted to put it in the fish room as soon as you open the door, right where that 150 is, and he, and he has a good point. That's all of our quarantine tanks right there. We don't wanna put a tank that's not quarantined. So he makes sense. This is the only place I can find it. Well, right now, I could go ahead and take it and put it where the Dwight Howard come from and would be done. But we have that 1,000 gallon up front that would be a much better fit there. So I have no place to put this. Our problem is finding a way to get under here. All the way around, there's these little one foot by eight inch holes filled with wood and, and spray foam around it. I took one out and I can see under this deck. And you can see that the, that is, there's air under here. This is sticking up at like two foot, and then there's air here. I don't know how this whole cement is across here with air under it and holding all this weight, but it's doing it. But we need to get in there somehow, which the only way I can figure is, see these steps right here? This is a railing going around the steps. Now, if we take that handrail and go down right there, this wall, we're gonna remove the wood and see if there's an access panel right there. Cause there is no access panel on the outside. So we don't know how to get under here, but we do need to get under here to fix that to keep this salt water here. Now, Josh was talking, you don't want no salt water, but hey, trust me, in my house, my rules, uh, Josh can uh, go go sit in the corner. I mean, he's, he's gonna have to deal with it. We're going to have the salt water tank. Don't you guys worry. Don't let him scare you. It's, but you understand our reluctance. I mean, that is dropping down where over here it's not, you know? Over there it's not. It is here, and this is right where the tank is. So why put extra stress on something that's already failing? You know, so that was our reasoning for that. I hope I answered all these questions for you guys. And uh, 
Oh, there's one more big one. We have a GATF in there, but, and this was a heck of a way for me to find out. Josh's last video, he was concentrating on, you know, the, the Pimas and this and that, and he's talking about them. What he didn't see was, his eyes were on the Pima. What he didn't see was, in this back corner, was the GATF laying on the floor. You know, and people start writing me messages, hey, uh, you're, you're dead GATF? I'm like, no, our GATF ain't dead. You know, until I walked out here, and I'm like, uh. He was the one that was bitten by the Armadas, and his guts were hanging out, and then they receded back up in, and then his skin closed up, and he healed up great. And he was eating, but he was getting really thick really fast. So I think maybe there was a blockage inside of him where his, his guts went back in and maybe were kinked there or something. I don't know, but he did die. So it was a heck of a way for me to find out. You guys knew before me. So, But he is gone. We only have one GAT left, GATF left. And, you know, that was so... So hardy, because I'm arguing with people. I'm, I'm writing all these people. No, he's still fine. He's fine. And then I went out there, and I had to go back and find all my <laughs> remarks and then delete them, because they were right. Um, the only thing we're doing in here now is this stingray is coming out and going in with our stingrays. And uh, let me see. Everybody's doing good here. Um... What else can I tell you? Oh, we can update on the little babies. Now, for this uh, weekend sale, we are going to have some red tails to give away, um, some placosmas to give away. There's some Jack Dempsey's. Um, uh, let me see what else. There are some uh, uh, little baby lobsters, crawfish, whatever you want to call them. But these are the babies. Look at them. Look They're doing good. There's two there. One over here. Look how much these guys. These these Dorados are growing so fast. The sturgeon's growing good. They're all eating good. And then here is the muskie. He's actually on pellets now. It's amazing. So I hope you guys can show up for this uh, weekend sale. Uh, you know, lots to give away, and we sell everything cheap. But Wednesday, or I'm sorry, Thursday and Friday. From 9 a.m. to whenever, if anybody can show up to help set up, we've got lots of pricing, lots more stuff to carry out and set up for the, the sale uh, come Saturday at noon. Um, we can use all the help that you know. You guys can, any volunteers can come by and help us. We'd be more than appreciative. We appreciate it, and thank you. And as always, stay fishy, my friends.